You know what doesn't go well with epic trips? Diarrhea. Hi, I'm Dr. Mike from The Outside MD, and if you're watching this video, then I hope you have some epic outdoor trip planned that you're going to need water purification for, and you're looking for a good place to start. Today, I'm gonna to be talking about the things that I use to filter my water, which are the Platypus Gravity Works filter, the SteriPen, and chlorine dioxide. But before we can talk about water purification, we need to talk about exactly what nasty little monsters we're trying to get out of our water. The largest organism we're concerned with in our drinking water are parasites, and usually we're gonna be ingesting either the larva or the egg. In general, parasites are not common in the United States, but that can be a different story abroad. One of the most interesting to me is known as Dracunculus madanensis, also known as the guinea worm. Basically, you swallow some water contaminated with larva. Then, as if out of some Stephen King nightmare, it burrows through your stomach or intestines and travels down your leg. Once it gets down into your lower leg or your foot, it then forms a blister so that it can release its eggs. This may be a hard blow to the foot fetish community, but I recommend not drinking foot bath water for this reason and for any other reason. You can't just pull it out because then it will break off and you're left with a dead worm inside you, which most people would swipe left on. So to get it out, what they do is wrap the head around a stick, like a matchstick, and put a little tension on it. They then leave the stick under a bandage, and the next day they come back and wrap it a little more around the stick. This process takes weeks because of the length of the worm, but your boyfriend will have left you by then anyway. The next class of organisms we're worried about are called protozoa, and in the US, these are a big concern. Two in particular are called Cryptosporidium and Giardia. Giardia are found naturally in rivers and they're spread with various animals like beavers. Beavers, that's right, despite constipating most of our rivers, they have a tendency to make us a bit runny. The most obvious thing you might think of are bacteria. These are things like E. coli, which causes traveler's diarrhea or cholera. Finally, there's the little guy, viruses. These are things like hepatitis A or norovirus. Norovirus is a particularly infectious culprit who's often linked to things like Grand Canyon rafting trips. Algae can also produce toxins that causes disease in humans, but usually this water is gonna be very visibly unappealing. It'll look nasty, so most people probably wouldn't drink it. But then again, I just read in a journal article about a guy who died from injecting crystallized wasp spray in an attempt to get high. So I guess anything's possible. Anyway, moral of the story is don't drink really nasty looking water or don't inject crystallized wasp spray to get high. Two morals to this story. Now let's talk about filters. And in particular, I'm gonna talk about the filter that I use, which is the Platypus Gravity Works filter. No one paid me to talk about anything in particular in this video. I just happen to like this filter. Filters are simple to use and they may actually improve the taste and clarity of the water. Now this is important because some of the items that we use may actually make the water taste worse. A few things about this filter. It can hold eight liters. That means you can carry all the water you'll need for a big group and have water for both dinner and breakfast the next morning. There is no pumping action required. You just hang it and roughly two and a half minutes later, the water is filtered while you do more important things. The build quality of everything is good. It doesn't feel as though it might break on you when you're out on the trail. It uses a hollow fiber design with filtration down to 0.2 microns. That's going to be small enough to remove 99.99% of everything except viruses. But viruses are going to be a problem for pretty much all the filters that we might use because they're just so small. To prevent your filter from clogging and to prolong its life, you should backwash a filter. What that means is basically you run it in reverse to get the big stuff out. With this filter, it's super easy. You literally just hang it upside down for a little while and it runs in reverse. One thing I really like about the Platypus Gravity Works filter is that it has an optional charcoal filter that you can buy. Charcoal filters are not standard, and having this makes this filter do several things that a standard filter cannot. One, they can remove more bad taste than a standard filter, so your water is going to taste better. And two, they can remove some toxins. Let's say, for example, there's some agricultural activity upstream that you're unaware of that's releasing toxins into the water. One thing I really don't care for about this filter is that it feels a bit clumsy, and there are a few small items that are easy to lose. And this is kind of what I mean by it feels clumsy. Get in there, get in there. If you're in an area where you're not really worried about viruses, this filter is probably all you need. But let's say you are in an area where you're worried about norovirus. Then you would either need to change or add another method to kill the viruses. I have two recommendations for what I use with this filter, 
to kill viruses. One is a SteriPen, the other is not condoms, although that is probably what it looks like. This is chlorine dioxide. SteriPens use ultraviolet light to kill bacteria. Ultraviolet light is bad for us. It gives us cancer, even though we have special protective pigments in our skin called melanin that absorbs it. Bacteria are more sensitive to ultraviolet light and basically it jumbles up their DNA so they can't reproduce. Plus, no one wants a sunburn on their flagella. SteriPens are cleverly designed in that they won't turn on unless they're submerged in water. This prevents you from getting blasted from the UV light, and while they're on the inside of the bottle, the harmful rays are blocked by the bottle itself, and it leaves no harmful leftovers. SteriPens are effective at eliminating all infectious organisms found in water, except for maybe some parasites. Limitations are that they are electronic, which means it could run out of batteries or stop working, though I have found mine to hold plenty of charge. Also, you need the water to be clear for it to work. It doesn't work in murky water as the UV cannot penetrate the murkiness. You also just can't stick the SteriPen into an oil drum of water and expect it to have any impact on such a large volume. You're limited to cleaning bottles that are one liter or less. The process is pretty simple. You choose the size of your bottle, stick in your probe, and then stir it until the timer is done. Best of all, it relies on the frowny face, smiley face method to tell if you did a good job. The only thing that could make that better is if it printed out a little gold star for you. And finally, the last method is chlorine dioxide. Chlorine dioxide is becoming more widely available as it used to be very difficult to manufacture. Note that this is different than just chlorine or iodine. Those items tend to worsen the taste of water, whereas chlorine dioxide doesn't really affect it. And just like the SteriPen, chlorine dioxide will kill pretty much every organism except maybe some parasites. The drawbacks are that you have a waiting period before you can actually drink the water and it needs to be protected from sunlight. When you already have an established camp, I've found this pretty easy to accomplish. I would either just do the disinfection at night or simply hide it in my backpack. If you're actively backpacking, this becomes a bit more difficult. The disinfection is not instant and the required contact time will vary depending on the conditions like the temperature. One standout feature about chlorine dioxide is that it is the lightest and smallest method. So in conclusion, there is no one method that works 100% on everything except boiling, which is often the least practical. The most ideal method will vary depending on your location, if you've got an established camp, or if you're trying to backpack or day hike. Then the method may even change depending on how you are carrying the water. Are you using a one liter bottle that you can just put a SteriPen in, or are you using a large hydration reservoir? Reservoir, reservoir. Clearly I cannot say that word when my face is cold. Probably also not when it's warm. I believe that this actually originates from the removal of Dracunculus metanensis. That is a loud bird. Wasp spray, wasp, wasp, wasp spray to get high. Hi. What? Hi, I'm Dr. Mike from the outside. I'm trying to think of how I can put another foot fetish joke. Can you have too many foot fetish jokes? I have no idea. Something I never thought I would ask myself. I have two recommendations for what I use with this filter. One is a SteriPen, and the other is chlorine dioxide. Why are you giggling? It looks like you're holding up a packet of condoms. I have two recommendations for what I use with this filter. One is a SteriPen, and this is not a packet of condoms. This is chlorine dioxide. When we can land on my nose. Oh, oh it popped. You know what? What happens if you suck in on it? Don't, don't try this at home. <coughs> oh, yeah, don't, don't do that.